How can I be a good executor of the will? Hey there, my name is Ron Payne. I'm the CEO and managing partner here at Apple Payne Law in Kernersville, North Carolina, where we help families navigate life's important decisions. And today I wanted to talk about how you can be the best executor possible, how you can do a good job and do right by the family. The first thing is if you find out that you're going to be the executor of somebody's estate before they pass away, is talk it over with them. If they're willing, look at the will and ask questions you have about what's going on, kind of what their estate scheme is. Now, of course, I would tell you, one, if they do share that with you, you really have got to keep that confidential. It's not a time or place before somebody passes away to bring all that up with the rest of the family. But if somebody's going to be excluded from the will and that's going to be a big bombastic effect or it's going to be a big ripple, you may really want to be aware of that going into it. Or if there's other things that they just need to discuss. And also it can help you look at the will and make sure you think it's clear what they want is what is written down. So first thing, talk it over with the executor. Second thing is you can't do anything otherwise beyond that point besides having a, a good idea of what they want until they've actually passed away. In North Carolina, you can't even file the paperwork for the estate. You can't apply to be the executor to the clerk of court until they've been passed away for 30 days. So there's no race to the courthouse here. And you have 90 days after they've passed away to file the will in a timely fashion and declare you know, your application for executorship under the will. So you know, you've got time after the passing to take care of these things. So then you would take the will and you would prepare the paperwork and that sort of thing. Now that is obviously something that can be really tricky, especially here locally in our clerk's offices. State law says they cannot give you legal advice, so they're going to hand you a pack of paperwork, but they're not going to be able to tell you further really which paperwork version applies to you and what extra documents you need. So that's certainly something we can help you with is that paperwork, that courthouse side of stuff. That is where we come in. So the next thing you're going to want to do once you've got the paperwork started is immediately, once you've been named executor, you have the authority and the duty to safeguard property. So if they've got a vacant house, you're going to want to make sure all the locks are locked. Somebody's keeping an eye on it. Maybe the yard's getting mowed just here in the interim while you start to put things together. And also safeguard any valuables that might be in there. If it was grandma's house and she had a lovely jewelry collection, you're going to want to go in there and lock all that stuff up if it hasn't already been secured because otherwise a thief could break in and steal everything or a estranged family member could walk in and clean out the place. And at that point, it's too late. If the stuff gets gone, you know, somebody more than once, I can say from our own experience, folks have driven up to the house of the U-Haul and started clearing it out two days later. And so as soon as you get qualified, you're going to want to take advantage of that. If you're not qualified yet, but you say, well, how do I safeguard the property? Go through the house and take pictures of everything. Just right after they've passed, just take pictures of everything where it is and don't remove anything just yet. If you do remove it, take pictures of what you remove, re itemize it and keep a journal so that you've kind of got receipts. Should anybody ever come back later and go, oh no, what did you do? You're stealing, etc." You want to have and say, no, no, I was just trying to make sure everything stayed safe. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create an organizational system. You're going to have a lot of paperwork. You're going to have a lot of receipts. You're going to be checking the mail. You might be doing taxes. You're going to be living, you know, in some ways, almost like a second life. And so, you know, running that person's life, but also you've got your own stuff to take care of. So keep a Google sheet, keep an Excel sheet, et cetera, of everything that comes in, where money's getting spent, where the money was found, where it's been deposited, et cetera. Now, of course, one of the things we do recommend is hiring an attorney. Yes, you can save a lot of money by doing this stuff yourself. However, if you do everything yourself, it might be prone to mistakes. And you're also, not only do you have to deal with the family dynamics and the personal belongings and the heartbreak, but then you also have to deal with courthouse. So where we come in is we'll take care of all of the legal things, the courthouses, if there's a tenant on the property, if they've got out of state property, we'll take care of all of that so that you can focus on handling the family and the stuff. 
you know, we can help coordinate with realtors. We can help coordinate with house cleaning crews to come in and clean up as needed to stage a house if that's if you're going to sell it or if you're just transferring it to the heirs, but you kind of want to get everything a, a fresh clean. Maybe it was a hoarder house and you don't know where to start. Those are the things that we can help you with so that you can then focus on dealing with the people and the family and caring for one another during this difficult time. You know, having said that, one of the things that executors can do to be a good executor is brace for conflict. You've been placed in charge of a situation and a lot of times because of the emotion of a loss, man, do the claws come out. People that got along previously, you find out that grandma was the glue that held the whole family together and once she's there not to keep the peace and nobody's having to be nice because of what mamaw's going to say, man, oh man, can the claws come out. So brace yourself for conflict and it, a lot of times that comes from mistrust. So if you can be open and transparent, you can keep good records, you can keep people posted on where you and your attorney are at, that's going to go a long way in minimizing conflict. And if it's not preventable and you get somebody who's just getting really hostile, that's another area where us as a law firm can come in and kind of help shield you from that toxicity. One of the last things you can do is carefully distributing assets, as we've talked about keeping a spreadsheet. So if grandma had a wish list of who she wanted to get what, and you, you know, you distribute it according to that, then, you know, make, make family members sign receipts. Hey, I received this on this day. It doesn't have to be fancy, but just being careful about who gets what, and also making sure that everybody's on the same page about when and how you do that. And then keeping receipts, as they say, so that you've got documentation. And the last thing is, Prepare the family to be patient, especially if you're going through the clerk of court and you're running a full estate. Estates can take six to 18 months to process, and so it's just not a quick process. And you can't distribute checks. You can't pass out money until the taxes and bills have been paid in accordance with state law. You just can't do it. So you have to wait for the notice to creditors to run and to make sure that everything's taken care of. So with that in mind, it's just going to take a long time. Lastly, you can help the attorney get all of that stuff submitted at the end, turn in that final inventory, and give closure to the family. You know, it really is helping that loved one after they've gone on make sure that their estate wishes and their final wishes, their last will and testament, is carried out in accordance with the way they wanted it done. And if you can do that, congratulations, you've got there. And if you're just getting started, I know it sounds like a lot. You can do it. The team here at Apple Pain Law can help. If that's something you'd like to give us a talk about and we can tell you whether you need an attorney, we can tell you if there's a shortcut because it's a really small estate and there's a more simple process than a full estate that you need to take, or maybe you've just got a car and that's the only asset in the entire state and you really don't want to spend $3,000 plus on a lawyer when the only asset is a $700 Volvo, but it was sentimental and you need to get title changed over. The team here at Apple Pain Law can help you navigate those important decisions. Reach out to us on the web at applepainlaw.com. Give us a call at 336-281-6928 or reach out to us on Facebook and social media. Hope this has been helpful. Like and subscribe. And until next time, take care, save those receipts, and have a great day.